over on Drangye, Greta is preparing for a midnight... A forgotten chapter in Ontario history. The Icelandic settlers in Kinmount. It's a hidden piece of Ontario history. The tragedy of the early Icelandic settlers. They arrived here in 1874 and went straight to Kinmount, a small town north of Peterborough. The 350 Icelanders were promised jobs with the railroad, but the work didn't last. Their living quarters were so inhospitable that many got sick. About 30 children died. Within a year, the remaining Icelanders packed up and moved to Gimli, Manitoba, leaving nothing but some unmarked graves behind. But today, their descendants are remembering them. A commemorative statue now sits on the banks of the Burnt River. The Icelandic settlement at Kinmount's always been a part of local uh, folklore. My great, great, great uncle was one of the ones hired to pick up a group of Icelanders who come to work on the railroad. There were about 350 Icelanders in the first wave. Climatic conditions in Iceland at the time forced a lot of people to move. They just had volcanic eruptions, a little bit of climate change. It's a cold country and a lot of them just got forced out. They had no idea what they were expecting when they, when they came to Kinmount. Um, the railroad company had constructed a few lumber style shanties here because that's what most railroad navvies or working men lived in. The lumber shanties were built not too comfortable. They were basically only meant to be bunk houses for the crews who were working outside and they were made for single men too. So when families showed up it was crowded and not too suitable to say the least. We figure around 20 to 25 died, mostly children under the age of three or four, but a few seniors too. They're buried somewhere in the settlement. We don't know the exact location of their graves. Likely wooden crosses were put up, and when the settlement moved, no one kept up the, the little cemetery, and it was lost. The statue represents a male figure with a cleansed left fist and a strong left arm, left being the heart side. He is forging his way into the new world, yet his head is looking back at his family, at his homeland. He knows he's never going to see them again. Yet the strength, the heart strength, carried in the fist, carries them into the new world to make a better life for his children. I feel this is a marker for all those people who were relatives of those who died. And even though their bodies perished, their spirits will always live on. Welcome to Kinmount, everyone. It's a pleasure to see so many people out tonight. Some of our guests have come from very, very far away. On my far right, we have Gudrun Gurgis, who's the lady behind this monument. The railroad ran intermittently for the next nine months. Some days they would, they would find work, other days they wouldn't, and then it ran out of money. Suddenly they were penniless, jobs dried up, there was nothing. There was really no local industry except for the lumber industry to employ them, and they didn't make good woodsmen. Back in Iceland, most of them were small herdsmen, cattle, sheep. Axes were not a common implement in Iceland, and here they were a must. You were given an ax and 100 acres and told to chop yourself a farm. They got their break to move to Gimli by pure happenstance. One day, a stagecoach was coming through Kinmount, and a young girl by the name of Carolyn Taylor happened to notice a couple of Icelandic women walking the main street of Kinmount. She asked the locals what was going on. They said, this is a colony that's moved. They gave them the whole story, and they're having a very tough time, and they're very unhappy. And she went and told her father, who was being a missionary, decided he would look in to see what he could do to help them. And eventually, he secured a government grant and, and all the information and, and whatever they needed to go to Manitoba. And he actually led the way out there and stayed with them. 
there's a lot of emotion floating around here tonight. My heart feels full to bursting and the strongest of these at this moment is humility. To be my connection to Kinmount here is that my ancestors came here in 1874 and suffered great hardship. I didn't know about Kinmount mostly because my mother tells me her grandparents were very reluctant to talk about it. She told them a little bit about it. She did tell them that they, uh, her, they had lost a child here. It wasn't their child, it was her, her, her in-law's child. And uh, she, she said, because it was so difficult, she said she would sit by the hour and tell them stories about Iceland, but she did not want to talk about the Kinmount experience. She, it started in Gimli as far as they were concerned. It's a very touching moment, being here in Kinmount, seeing the, the statue unveiled, the ceremony. I just feel that it vindicates uh, everything my people went through years ago. You never really know who you are until you know where you came from. And this is part of where we came from. This maybe gives us some of our resiliency, our bit of the Viking blood, I think. <laughs> really. <laughs> When the Icelanders came to Canada, a great number of them were literate. As a matter of fact, all of them were literate. They could afford pencil and paper, if not anything else. And so as great storytellers in their oral tradition and on paper, they kept telling the stories and they recorded them at Kinmount. My mother really instilled in me uh, a pride in being Icelandic for all the things that such a small country has accomplished. I mean, look at it, they're an island in the North Atlantic surrounded by ocean. It's a, it's a volcanic island. I mean, this is a, not an easy place to, <laughs> to survive. And, uh, and they flourished. And I think that that's something that she always instilled in me, that I, was, I come from a very uh, special group of people uh, in Iceland, a very hardy people, very hardworking people, and also people with a wonderful sense of humor and a love for music and stories and all that kind of thing. Over on Drangi, Grether is preparing for a midnight swim. The passionate Bishop of Holar is awake half the night writing new psalms. The legacy that we are leaving here today is that anybody that comes by will always know the story of the Icelandic people. They'll go and read the plaques on the statue and they'll realize that it isn't just the little town that you saw, there were people, and I know all the immigrant people had a terrible time when they came. This is one story in our Canadian history.